All right, what's on the bench today? Uh, sent to the channel by Finercy is the DPS-150. So this is their little power supply. Um, it's been around a while and like everybody and their brothers reviewed this already. So I'm a little bit late to the party, but uh, Finercy sent it to me, so I'll give it a review. Um, so it is uh, a little portable power supply. It's got a little, uh, little flip-up display. A little flip-up display. There we go. Um, and uh, it is not rechargeable, okay? So it has no batteries in it. It requires a power supply to operate the power supply. So you can either, you can do this several ways. Um, it has a uh, three and a half, three three point five millimeter uh, barrel connector here that you can supply. You can put your own DC wall ward or something on there. It can handle five to thirty two volts here. Um, I think most people will be using the USB C, the high powered version USB C. Um, and there's a little switch here to select between the two. You can either use the DC connector or the uh, or the uh, USB-C connector, so that's what that switch does. This is for uh, uh, either flashing new firmware into the device, or they actually have software that you can download and operate the device uh, over USB. So if you want to have a nice big display on your computer or whatever, you can do that. I won't be covering that today. Uh, on the front, we have the two connectors. Um, now these uh, do not have very usable screw connectors. They, they, they're, they're smooth. And so even though they do unscrew and there's a little hole in there to put a wire in, they really are unusable, I believe, um, just because you can't get a grip on them, right? You need the gription. So, um, uh, it does come with, with, uh, uh, cords though. So, uh, it has, a. uh, banana jack you can plug in. So that's the way to use this thing with the banana jack. And it has a nice big heavy duty uh, alligator clip on the other side or crocodile, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it comes with two of those. It comes with a USB cable. Now, um, like I said, you need to supply your own power supply, but for Nursey sells, sells this thing two ways. It sells it as a standalone product like this. They also sell a unit um, with this, so it comes as a package that's a hundred volt, uh, I mean a hundred watt power supply that mates with this thing. Um, and uh, I'll be doing this standalone version and I have uh, my own uh, USB-C uh, 65 watt uh, wall wart, so that's what I'll be using. And uh, so let's uh, hook it up and put some power on it. So it has a really nice looking display. It's not touchscreen, uh, but it is a very, very nice looking display. Um, the way that you get around the menu system is uh, there is a home button uh, that has some generic things like your over voltage protection, over crit. You can set those to whatever you want. Uh, I'll just take the defaults now. And we we'll use the wheel here or the arrows. We we'll use the arrow system. Have it in English or Chinese. Set the brightness and everything. So that's what that one does. Uh, there's an M button that is memories. Okay, so uh, there's memory, uh, six different memories, I think. So I have memory group one set to five volts, memory group two set to 10 volts, memory group three set to 12 volts, everybody at one amp. And then, yeah, there's six, six, different, uh, six different memory groups, okay? And then um, the way that you normally would operate the device is you push this button and it highlights something here and you can either highlight uh, voltage or current. So you go, to, you go up to voltage and then you arrow over for whatever digit you want to change and then you use the wheel here and you can change, you can change, the, uh, change the voltage. Now I have 20.23 volts coming in the USB-C. So uh, 20 volts, uh, 10 volts at one amp would be 10 watts. So it certainly should be able to handle that. Um, let's see, that's how you do those settings. Um, enable, in, in order to enable the output, uh, 
I don't really like the placement. It's over here on the side. I'd rather have it on the top or maybe even on the front or something. I don't know. It's, just weird. it's weird on the side, but you, you click it on the side and then these guys light up and then you know you have an active output. So now I would have 10 volts here and click it and, and uh, it turns turns off. Okay. It shows you your V set and your I set and also shows you that your uh, current uh, voltage, your current amp amps and your current watts. All right. So let's hook something up pretty benign first. Um, all right. So I've got this nice big, uh, nice big resistor here. I have it set to 10 ohms. All right. As it has a slidey thing on it, I have it set to uh, set to 10 ohms. And so let's plug it. Oh no, complete fail. <laughs> so, so here's, here's fail. Number one is you can't use a standard spacing. Uh, yeah, it, uh, this, my connector won't, won't fit. So we'll have to use their cables. All right. So let's plug on, let's plug their cables on one onto the plus and one on to the minus. All right. And then let me hook up the, hook up the resistor. Now I'm going to turn the power on and I've got uh, 10 volts at 0.984 amps, one amp, and that is equal to 9.84 watts. So yeah, so that's working. That's working good. Uh, let's see here. Let's take it up in voltage. Uh, we can go here to volts and uh, we have gone into constant current mode. We're limiting it one amp. Okay. So that's working. So I have it set at 15 volts, one amp. And so it's limiting itself to one amp. And, uh, so if we want to change that, we would go back to our setting here. Oops. We'd go to amps. I'll arrow over and let's go up to five amps. Uh, that should be plenty to go. Now I can turn it back on and now we've got uh, 15 volts at 1.47 amps and we're probably dropping some voltage in their cables here. Let's go ahead and measure that. Measure the voltage drop on the plus side here. 0.03 volts. So yeah, pretty good. So pretty good stiff wire or stiff wire, but I mean, not stiff, it's flexible wire, but it's a large, large diameter, um, large gauge. So that's working really, really good. All right. So let's go ahead and turn this off and let's go ahead and get out a, um, variable load. We'll get out my DC load. All right, I have my little mini wear um, load here. I can do constant voltage, constant current, constant resistance. I have it set to constant resistance, 10 ohms, and I can turn that on. And uh, we should have the same, same conditions as we just had. There we go, 15 volts at uh, 1.135, 1.135. Huh. Maybe my load isn't doing, doing the, the correct thing. Let's do a constant current. Let's see, set constant current. Let's set that to one and a half, oops. one and a half amps just for fun. There we go one and a half amps. And yes, we have 1.5 amps over here. So that's working good. Let's go here to uh, two amps. Let's go to two and a half amps. Oops. Two and a half amps. There we go. Two and a half amps at 15 volts. Things work in a treat. All right. It has a internal th thermometer, I think 26 degrees C. I'm not sure exactly where it's measuring. Um, the display here shows you that, uh, we're in constant voltage mode. 
and that will turn red in say constant current mode. There's really not a lot else to say about this thing. It's pretty it's pretty simplistic. Um, we are drawing 37.5 watts. My uh, USB-C is drawing 43 watts, so 43 watts, 37 watts, so we're dropping 5 watts someplace. Um, probably, uh, I don't know if these have a DC to DC, I imagine this would have a DC to DC converter and not just a linear converter in them. So there's probably some uh, heat going out in this thing somewhere, I don't feel it anywhere but probably around five watts or something like that. I don't know. I think one thing uh, I want to take a look at today though is um, uh, the uh, power supply ripple on this thing, what it looks like. If we see switching noise or, or we don't see switching noise. So I'm gonna use my, my big resistor for that. So I'm not gonna introduce any noise by the, uh, by the DC load. So I'll go ahead and turn that off. Um, Bring back, bring back my big resistor. Um, I'm not going to do a teardown on this thing because there's a whole bunch of other channels who have recently and a long time ago done teardowns. There's at least, I, I, I've seen at least three teardowns of this thing. It's just a single PC board. It's got some nice components on it. It does have a, um, a bunch of copper pads on the PC board that mate with a, um, heat sink um, one of those kind of squishy rubber heat sink big blobby things that go on there not exactly sure how that works out because I thought those were conductive but, or electrically conductive but I guess they're not so it just picks up all the heat from all those individual pads and brings them into a big heat sink but let's go ahead and turn on my oscilloscope and we'll take a look at the uh, ripple on this thing all right, so I have the oscilloscope probe hooked up. We're uh, doing 15 volts at one and a half amps. And this is what we see on the oscilloscope. Um, there is, uh, I hit the auto scale and it did, a, it did a really cool thing. It went ahead and put in a 15 volt offset. So 15 volts is actually in the center, oops, is actually in the center of the screen. And um, you can see that it is a switching supply. There's a whole bunch of noise. And uh, I've turned on an AVC RMS measurement. So uh, yeah, that's good around here, around 60 millivolts. So pretty healthy. Um, but if you look at this on a on a normal time scale, let's go ahead. And, I mean, a normal vertical scale. Let's do a a zero, and then we will uh, bring it down. Let's go here to two volts per division. Let's drop this down to the bottom here, so we can sort of see what's going on. So that just kind of gives you a better a better scale of things. So this is 15 volts, and then you can see that you know it's quite a bit of noise. Uh, can't lie. Let's turn this thing off, and it'll drop down. Turn it back on. Yeah, quite a bit. Let's drop the. Uh, let's go into current current mode here. I'm going to set the current to one amp so now we're in constant current mode at one amp and our our uh, measurements here let me do a, a reset on our measurement let's see here how do you do the reset on the measurement huh. uh, I don't know I'm not sure how to do the reset. Uh, counts. 10,000 counts. Voltage. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Let's just turn it off. I'll turn it back on again. There we go. 
So yeah, it's around the same, around 54 millivolts of noise, 56 millivolts of noise. So about the same. Seems a little bit cleaner in constant current, but we're all only at one amp too. But uh, yeah, there you go. It is a, a bit of a bit of a noisy supply. All right, let's go ahead and do a uh, AC. Let's see here. Let's go to AC analysis. Let's do a bandwidth of 20 megahertz, which is what most power supplies are measured to. And let's take a look at this and we'll increase the uh, sensitivity. And then let's go ahead and reset our measurement. And we're at about 46 millivolts right now. So, yep, still noisy. Still noisy. We'll do one single shot here. Uh, where's our... Here we go, single shot. Yeah. Single shot. Single shot. You can sort of see the, uh, the DC... DC, uh, DC to DC converter. You can see we're getting some, some different types of ringing on the, uh, on the converter, whether it's needing current or not. So yeah, there you go. All right. Well, that was my quick review of the, uh, Finerci DPS-150. A uh, cute little thing. Um, uh, I think, I think it's, uh, probably worthy of those, um, putting a lab together on one small workbench, right? Uh, small oscilloscope, small power supply, small uh, tiny SA, uh, nano VNA, you know, just have a drawer full of uh, products now instead of, a, <laughs> instead of a garage full. You just have a drawer full, pull them out as they're needed and stuff. So yeah, it's a nice little supply.